a probably a fish about ready to take a take a bite. But you can see also you have to put these in because you can't put them all the way up to the side because it's going to have the the sunlight. We're we're literally if you were a fish farmer you, you'd be magnifying uh, a close look at how much feed you're giving. Mm. And we do the same thing with the sunlight. So you'll notice that these are very shallow tanks. It's going to have too much sun and be tough to keep up with the algae. So we put shade cloth across the top. And then there's a shade, uh, if it rains, they'll put this, which is also 50% shade. Mm. And in the summer, maybe between 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock, this is as well. The biggest mistake I made in designing these is why didn't I put the opaque one on the top? so that you were always out of the rain. Because you'll hear, if the rain starts, you'll hear everybody scrambling and starting to go boom, 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 throw these lids back on and take them back off. And put them mm -hmm. back but if we had the corrugation on the top, yeah. which is what we're building now, mm -hmm. then all you need to, in the summer is maybe a little extra cloth like you uh -huh. see in that second. Yep, makes sense. It'd be much easier, you know, unrolling a uh, yeah. piece of shade cloth than, than a hard, hard lid. Uh, Joey, is this 50% or 70? This is, I want to say, 60, 68. Yeah. This is Joey Mandara. He's the STEM um, manager here. And I usually show a picture of uh, somebody cutting corals back when Joey was an intern. <laughs> <laughs> now he's the big cheese here. <laughs> But if you let these go too fat, too long, they start to grow the crustose coral and algae like he's having to clean up. So if he had had more tanks than he needed, about every five tanks has a, has a blank one that's always clean. And so if Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you take one of these tanks and you move it into the clean one, clean this up and let it dry overnight, then the next day you take the next one and move it over. Mm. The next one. Then you don't get it accumulated like here they can't afford to have uh you know five empty tanks right now because they have so many corals but this is the new tank uh, we'll be looking at uh, across the way you notice the difference is yeah. that it's smaller it's four foot by four foot it's also clear it also doesn't have the opaque sides or a flat side mm. so we built in this curvature and so the air bubbler here takes only one quarter of the amount of air Wow. Water. And the arch of this top actually captures the air from going across as big bubbles. So you see it like that even when it's operating. Wow. And if you don't like seeing it come through the water movement, you look through the side. And if you were a child coming to visit exactly. or a lady That's in a wheelchair. That's what I was thinking. It's so uh, kid friendly. Yeah. Yeah. So now as a manager, you're walking up and down and being able to see your crop all the time. Very cool. And because it's clear, you, you don't have to pull it away from the sides. Mm -hmm. We can actually fit about 25% more coral in this short tank than we can in the long tank. Wow. And we can make one of these for a quarter of the cost, and uh, I can build one of these in a day. Wow. I don't have to wait six months for a tank. That is awesome. So it's also on a pallet. Um, so the legs come off the pallet, goes in so I can stack these and ship these. Mm -hmm. And then also, I'm hoping this year to design a new vessel, catamaran vessel with a hole in the center this size, a little bit bigger. I can put 10 of these tanks on the vessel, lift it up with a crane, and drop it down to the divers, and they just reach in and get things. Wow. You're not going from a, um, you know, what will usually happen is they'll one by one take these, put it in another transport, Air it, put it on an igloo cooler, put it on the truck, go to the boat, mm -hmm. different one on the boat, acclimate them on the boat, hand them in something that takes a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. Down, you've handled it five times. This is going to be more like modular containerization. Yeah. We hope to be able to bring a forklift up, take the whole tank and, and the pallet, lift it, take it right to the boat, lift it on the gantry, put it in place, and send it right down to the diver. Just think for the whole thing. The whole yeah, thing. Yeah, do the same amount of work with a quarter of the staff. Yeah, and then. Yeah. If we have to do a field nursery for acclimating them, we could put a cover on that sort of, and leave it there for a couple weeks to acclimate. Mm -hmm. And if it starts to get too uh, foul, bring the boat back up, bring it up to the surface. Now you're sitting under shade cloth. Now you get little um, chairs to sit around this, and everybody's got to 
what they're doing and they can sit there not bubbling any uh, um, uh, bubbles with, uh, That's awesome. the tank. But you could have three volunteers sitting around this with little drinks with uh, umbrellas on it, as cold <laughs> drinks, and they could be, you know, cleaning an entire tank of a thousand corals and then put it right back down wow. and not have to get in the water. Except for maybe somebody, you know, hooking it up. That's amazing. So that, that's the potential we're looking for. We're looking for how to get this to scale. What do you do in the event of a hurricane? She said, what do you do in the event of a hurricane? Uh, actually, three things. One is uh, um, all of these get strapped on top. Uh, what I would also do is uh, these corals can stay alive out of the water for about two days. And so we can hold them packed up in those igloo coolers you saw and bring them upstairs to the second floor for two days and then bring them back down. And I'll cross the way, we should be putting them you know, five times the density in just a couple of tanks inside the container all closed up. Anchor, anchor the sea container to the ground. Oh, cool. And then, the, yeah, they're the... And, and the other option that we, we used to do is the, to literally um, ship it to ourselves. So FedEx, second day air, or UPS, second day air, we pack them up, which we usually do for shipping to California or Texas for experiment uh, research. And so they, they do fine on two-day shipment. So we pack them in a cooler. Um, with the address as ourselves, so it actually with UPS and, and it goes to Nashville, I think it is, or uh, <laughs> Louisville, maybe. It's and it sits there in the thing, and then it comes back two days later after the storm. Is that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you were telling me that last yeah. night. I was like, that's a slick move, Doc. Yeah, <laughs> put it on the back of your truck, and you yeah. drive out of the hurricane, and you drive back. Mm. Just like we all had to do in the hurricanes here. I'm trying to decide which coast to run to. <laughs> so we'll just take a quick walk down here so you can see what we'll be working with tomorrow. So awesome, huh, bro? Oh, man. That's how we're saving the planet, brother. So awesome. <laughs> My face is starting to hurt. I'm smiling so much. <laughs> Are these little staghorns? These are wow, they're so dark. Yeah, they're orange. So much wow, golly! I've never see seen them that start, dark before. Starting to stick up the, the yeah. horns. Yeah. How cool! No, no. What we'll have to do is, is probably shade them more, or put them in an area that um, yeah. they'll, they'll lose the color after a while and look more like a natural. <laughs> And you'll notice that there's a, uh, a plug, as we call it, by each group with an a alphanumeric um, label on it. So if they had one that they just cut, they or they know they cut into nine pieces, they would put that AC is Acropora, Cervicornis, uh, 25 uh, is the genotype, and 0.4 might be the fourth time mm -hmm. it was cut. And then this is maybe 30 of them. So these will be planted near each other. Mm -hmm. And it's important to keep track of the genotypes as we're understanding which have more resilience to, and to disease they, they and climate change. Yep. If mm -hmm. so, if this one and this one mm -hmm. are touching it, they would be. They fighting. won't. They'll they'll go In to fact, war. Before we actually got genotyping done, uh -huh. that's what, how we knew if it was the same strain. Yeah. Overnight, we put two together to touch okay. each other, and in the morning, if they were fighting, they, we know they're different yep. genotypes. Yep. If they're not fighting, we know that we got a match. Awesome. How cool is that? Okay. I'm gonna so turn this back yeah, on. You see how it's it's hard to leave these. Things. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say my face is hurting. I'm smiling so hard. <laughs> this is so cool. Why are they so dark right now? Uh, they're so dark because they're, they're only in six inches of water. Okay. And uh, even with the uh, shade, uh, that's one reason why we have to have a gallon a minute here mm -hmm. of cold water coming in. It's because this is literally a solar collector, and it would heat up. 
the color you're seeing is is from an algae zooxanthellae so like since there's so much sunlight right doc that that's why there's they're darker so is much. because they have more zooxanthellae than, than than they would 10 12 feet below the water and, and it is a problem in that we have to literally acclimate them because you put this color coral out there with yeah. the other yellow or orange ones it sticks out like as i say a chocolate covered strawberry for a parrot fish yep yeah. <laughs> so let's yep. move to the next one and then awesome. we'll have most of tomorrow to spend here yeah these are all the same stage of development as well yeah these are all the same stage so you'll see different species different stages of what the age are uh-huh uh, these may be Nine months old. And I'm going to show you one at a time. We'll be here for two hours. <laughs> Wait, you can't see it through the bubbles, can you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is where oh, I'm doing wow. some. These are showing you how fusion takes place. Mm -hmm. um, Wow. You saw some of these here. Well, maybe you did. They're getting very big. They're touching each other. And um, I'm going to quickly grab one of these. <laughs> you can't even recognize it. This was four. Wow. It, next, it grew yeah. completely yeah, and it fused around back the together. Bottom, fused together. You can't even break this apart. And this is what it looks like. Here's six of them wow. that fused together. And this is what this will look like in another half a year. Mm -hmm. It will start to grow up. You won't even see yeah. the yeah, bugs won't even... there. So this is what we're trying to do up there, and I'll talk about it later, but uh, these are stems now. I now grow them on just the stems first, and then the stem can get placed in something like that, like a coral head yeah, receiver, yeah, yeah. and grow over the top of it first before it even goes out. So um, I'm also testing some different uh, materials, which we'll talk about later, but some of these uh, plugs are made out of ceramic. They cost about a quarter a piece which uh, they also come from China. Mm -hmm. And so it takes a lot of CO2 actually to make uh, ceramics in a kiln and then to ship it over here. If I wanted to use those ceramics at 25 cents a piece, I would need a quarter million dollars to grow my first million plant, or corals. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to raise a quarter million dollars just for the just plugs. Yeah. So we'll show you that we can make a plug out of cement for a quarter of a cent wow. instead of a quarter of a dollar. And now we're looking at other materials, uh, 3D printed ones, and now a brand new one I'm not gonna talk about till tomorrow. <laughs> I'm ready but, to hear about that. But, <laughs> but this Very is the cool. material here, see these yep, squares? Yep. Wow. This is a new material. You'll see these, this one species, the Solanacera. This is the sa same size that it was planted, either on a stem or on a plug, or this is the size it became thing. on this material. Wow. Now take a look at the parietes, Holy same thing. Cow. This is them in size. I planted that size, same size that on here, the and they're growing right off of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a little bit about that special material t tomorrow. Very that good. Cheese <laughs> it's better. I'll oh, tell you what, man. that's one of my favorite parts. It, yeah. it gets, it's so, oh man. He was talking about a little bit last <laughs> night, and it got so me pumped cool. up, that's for it's, sure. So it's literally, it's the same as their skeleton. It's actually calcium carbonate. Uh -huh. 